Welcome to Market Movers, where we identify market moving headlines and then discuss ways to either hedge risk or create exposure in affected assets. We have Scott Mark. Hi, Jim. Scott, so headlines this week. We have issuance of a 20 year bond, but also just massive issuance in general, surprising equity strength, and then some interesting moves in gold and silver. What's the biggest headline that's catching your attention? In my opinion, it's the equity strength, Jim. I mean, not so much the fact that the market has rallied, given that we're starting to reopen the economy, that the Fed and the Treasury continue to be uh, so accommodative, but it's the fact that we're seeing strength building on strength. So we're having big move days to the upside, which are not pulling back anymore, say, the next couple of days after that. They're actually having strong days that build on strong days. So in my opinion, with the prospects of things maybe getting a little better, certainly some progress on the COVID-19 treatments and vaccines, that's helping equities stay strong here. Okay, CME has four marquee equity contracts, which are the S&P, the NASDAQ, the Russell, the Dow. They both trade in the regular mini, the micro, and Monday, Wednesday, Friday, and weekly options. Which one of those should lead the charge to the upside if it keeps moving? I still like the NQs here, Jim. I like the fact that these tech heavy companies or tech savvy companies, let's say, which have become such a big part of our lives, by the way, as we all are social distancing and working from home. They have strong balance sheets, very good revenue growth and very nice looking profitability going forward. So my focus still remains as far as equities go in the NASDAQ and Q index. On to massive, massive issuance, which is pushing the prices down a little bit in treasuries. But then there's the other side, which are uh, central banks buying, particularly the Fed, global liquidity that's ending up probably hiding in U.S. Treasuries too. What wins? Do you think rates can go up in the long end? I believe they will. I think it's also the hope that things get a little bit better and more stable economically, Jim, and then therefore the curve should just naturally steepen. So in my opinion, given that we've had all the issuances of new bonds all along the curve, probably tends to normalize the curve a little bit in a way. And so therefore, as we're looking at uh, the interest rate curve over, say, the next six to 12 months, maybe inflation concerns start to creep in a little bit as well. I believe the curve starts to steepen from here. Okay, let's point out that the 10 year contract, the CME, is a mature contract that has massive liquidity, also has weekly, monthly, and quarterly options. Uh, on to gold and silver. We mentioned it a little bit before. Silver's at a 50% move since mid March. Granted, it, it got hit pretty hard before that. Is silver or gold? telling us something about the dollar that's ominous on the horizon. I believe it's more the liquidity story, Jim. You listen to the Fed uh, governors or the Fed chairman Powell these days, and it's certainly nothing but dovish speak. I believe that the market is seeing a lot of help that the Treasury Department, Stephen Mnuchin, Treasury Secretary, is providing with respect to more support they're willing to give if things do start to tail off here. So in my opinion, looking at the metals is a great indicator of how much liquidity is certainly out there, but also likely to come. And therefore, the moves in GC and the silver contracts are uh, very relatable to me, given all the liquidity that's out there. Okay, CME has the the normal gold and silver contracts. They have um, active micro contracts and both weekly and monthly options. Thanks for joining us on Market Movers, where we are helping to make you a better trader.